can you? No, you just it just doesn't it doesn't compute. It's so steep. I don't know where I've been. I don't know where I'm going. Leaving the beach at Gaylock, we set off to head for Glen Torridon. Following the A832 along the side of the beautiful Loch Marie and visiting Victoria Falls, no, not those ones, before turning off onto the A896 into Glock Torridon. Glock Torridon? Glen Torridon. And this is an A road? It is now. It was like driving on an airport runway. Well, it was nice while it lasted, but I guess this is such a popular route it must be difficult to actually do any roadworks around here. A place called Victoria Falls between Gerlock and Torridon. I'm sure it's nothing like the ones in Africa, but we'll go and have a look. Oh, yeah, it's, it's a beautiful day. <laughs> Best weather we've had so far. There are two viewing points for the falls, one at the bottom here which follows an easy level path and one slightly higher up which oh, involves pretty. a little bit of scrambling but well worth it. Unfortunately there hadn't been much rain when we visited because they can be quite dramatic after heavy rainfall and when this river is in spades you can imagine just how fast it flows over these rocks. It's so smooth. enjoyed that walk around the falls. It was a shame that there wasn't a little bit more water in it but it was still very pretty. Yeah. So we continued on our journey down the shores of Loch Marie. over part way down to let Blue stretch his legs, again if you get our drift. And as we sat in Buddy we were watching these two girls go out on this paddle board. It looked a bit dangerous out there, there was quite a wind blowing and the current was forcing them further down the lock. It seemed like an extreme thing to do just to get a photograph. Oh, it for the photo. <laughs> oh dear. Thankfully no one fell off. Now left the main road to Inverness and we're heading towards Torridon. We're going to look for somewhere to park overnight here. We know there's going to be midges. We're just going to have to make sure that we're prepared for it. Sure it gets windy. Yeah. Now we've checked out the smidge midge forecast quite regularly during this trip. The one on screen actually relates to how it is now and the season is over. But in the height of it, when we went in May, Torridon is usually one of the highest scoring areas. So we know what we're letting ourselves in for. That's a deep one, isn't it? <laughs> we thought we'd actually then. found our spot yeah. here, but we decided against it. Probably get company, do you think, though? Will it be so big? Yeah, I think we should have a look a bit further on, sorry. 
So it wasn't to be, so we continued further along Glen Torridon. You just know when you've found the spot, it just, it just feels right. And that one didn't. just can't get our heads around these mountains here. The camera is just not going to do it justice. You cannot possibly capture just how steep and how overpowering those mountains are. They're huge. We were part under the sheer face of Loch Ath mountain absolutely incredible just could not get over the scale of it and at this time of night with the sun setting behind it it looked very foreboding they're here there's thousands of the little blighters I think our defences are holding and if not I am ready with the raid now I know what you're all thinking when we shut that window they're all gonna be inside but I'm gonna blast it with the raid before we leave no you just it just doesn't it doesn't compute it's so steep on the top as well, but... It's just ridiculous. It's just one big straight wall. Yeah, it just doesn't. And with uh, Dad venture out of the van this morning, the little blighters were really bad first thing. I mean, the back windows just covered in dead bodies where I got the raid out. <laughs> 
but it really is beautiful. It's a shame we, uh, we've had to do everything inside this morning, which proves it can be done. We've managed to swap all the beds and everything round, get it ready for driving, and uh, we're off down to Torridon. No, we're just Before saying it, it was a bit quiet. Well, I'm not complaining, quiet night's lovely. But it was a bit quiet for Blue, and he got a little bit yeah, uncomfortable in the early hours, about half past one. That's a bit annoying. A yeah, bit of something. Back, background noise or something. And it was dark, and there was just the sound of silence, basically. So he soon settled again, though, didn't yeah, he? Just he's a fine. quick stroke, and he went down again. This morning, he's, he's proper dog tired, isn't he? <laughs> it's been a long trip for him. Yeah, he's so been excellent, his... really. I mean, oh, he has. It's just, you can't... As long as he gets his sleep after each day, he's fine. Yeah, he? yeah. He doesn't sleep when we're driving, because he's frightened of missing something. He squeals like a banshee when we stop, because he's frightened of missing something. Well, he just gets excited, because <laughs> he knows that once we get out of the car, he's, he's going to be either on yeah. a beach... Or a forest. Out, yeah, or up on, on the headlands there or somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, we're heading, as I said, we're heading now down to Torridon. And I think that's where the majority of the big uh, camper vans and motorhomes went last night to stay. Because we were here on our own, weren't we? We don't know what's there, we're just going to... No, no we'll idea. It'll be either stop off or drive through, won't it? Yeah. Exactly. And there's a visitor centre, I think. Yeah. Yeah, anyway, we'll go and have a look. Yep. Take you guys along for the ride. Catch you later. Hope you've enjoyed this video, and if you have, come along with us next time when we visit Applecross before descending Balaknabar.